Welcome back to another edition of the Wizard Shop. Today we're actually not going to talk about this car. We're going to talk about what it possesses. There's a lot of cars I have in this shop right now that have very expensive engines, high horsepower, exclusive engines. But today we're going to talk about the best engine that your money can buy. And now, for the money, of course. Let's go ahead and get the hood open and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here we have the Buick 3800 V6. In my opinion, and in Ward's best engines, and in very, very many mechanics' opinions, this, for the money, is the best engine that you can buy. Here in a minute, I'm going to go over some of, the, some of the different features about the engine, some of the history of the engine, and then I'm going to show you some of the common issues with the engine. Even though it's the best engine that you can get, it still has a few issues here and there. It's not a perfect engine. A perfect engine doesn't exist. A lot of us are looking for a car, we're in the market for a car, and we say, we want something that gets 30 miles per gallon, but we want something that has a little bit of power. We want something that's reliable. We want something that's not going to leave us stranded every six months. We need something that's going to be easy to repair and cheap to repair whenever something does go wrong. Every single one of those attributes is right there all of the attributes. These cars, this big car, are notorious for on the highway cruising 28 to 30 miles per gallon. Ask anybody that has one. This guy has told me the same thing. Has over 200 horsepower. No, it's not a speed demon, but it's got plenty of power. It's got good power. When something does go wrong, it's not five grand to fix it. It's usually $50 or a hundred. I have serviced a guy who owns an air conditioning company, he works on house air conditioners and commercial, a silver one of these, a Le Sabre, 430,000 miles on the original motor. He did have to do a lot of suspension work and things to keep the car on the road, but as far as the core of the engine, 430,000 documented miles. I've seen nothing but great success stories with this engine. This car is actually in here because the customer took it into a dealership for an oil change. And the dealership tried the scare tactics and tried to scare the crap out of the guy. There's huge engine oil leaks. There's huge problems. There's going to be two grand to fix it, blah, blah, blah. I get it to the shop because he trusts me. I put it on the lift. There's not a drip to be found anywhere. Here's the picture. Do you see any leaks under there? Do you see any drips? It's dry as a bone. I was almost tempted to have the guy go back to the dealership with me and say, show us the leak. Show it to us. There isn't one. There were several other issues on here that it's going to be expensive to fix and this and that. All it needed was a window motor. It needed some services, a transmission flush. I went ahead and did that, an oil change, some bulbs. This bill's going to be under a grand and it's going to have fixed all these items. It's getting to be a pretty big problem at dealerships anymore. I, I keep hearing that more and more and more. Oh, they keep saying I need to replace the whole motor and it ends up not being true. I don't know why that is. But back to the car and back to the engine. They use this engine in Bonnevilles, Le Sabres, Riatas, Silhouette Vans, Regals, Centuries, 88s, 98s, Tornados, Luminas, tons of cars. They're not the prettiest cars on the planet. They're not. They're not exotic, they're not special, but they look decent and they do the job. And the ones with this engine particularly provide great service, great fuel economy, and great power. It's great. It's a wonderful engine. The first series of this engine is actually pre-series one. It's called the LN3. And they only made they started that in 1988. That's when that engine came out. It, wasn't, it didn't have a whole lot of power, but the basic foundation for the 3800 series motor began in 1988. Now, a person could say back in the 60s and 70s, they did have a derivative of this rear-wheel drive 
it was like a three liter V6, I think. They had different sizes and things through the years, and that probably would have been the structure, the backbone of this motor. But the 3800 series started in 1988. Series one started in 1992. They had naturally aspirated and supercharged versions of the engine. And that's when this all began, this really, really good engine. They stopped making the Series 1 in 1995 and went over to the Series 2, which came out in 95 as well. They made some upgrades on power. They made some upgrades on some seals and gaskets and different things, but they really didn't change a whole lot in the core of the motor. And they ran that, the Series 2, until 2005. In 2004, they came out with a supercharged Series 3, and in 2005, the naturally aspirated Series 3. It had several upgrades to the fuel injection system, some of the electrical things that in, as far as the fuel management and engine management, but still the core of the engine was still there, still a 3800 and still pretty much bulletproof. The very last 3800 made by General Motors was on a Friday, August 22nd, 2008. They actually had a big ceremony over the whole deal and they had guest speakers and a, kind of a big to-do. It, it was really kind of a sad day. They really didn't want to put the motor down, but the really sad thing to me is what replaced it. It's the horrible, horrible 3.6 GM motor, a piece of trash. Why, why would you throw that in the trash and give people a lump of garbage? I don't, that's to me is not a wise business move, but let's take a look around the engine bay. I'll take this cover off and I'll show you some of the common issues this engine has and some of the wonderful features that it has. So, to take these covers off, this is a Series 2 motor. That's it. Easy. So, let's talk about some of the things that are great about this motor. As you can see, everything is out in the open and easy to replace. You can reach your hand around the whole motor. You can get to the spark plugs. You can get to the wires. If a, Here's your coils. One coil runs two cylinders. If one goes bad, you take a screw out, you take that coil out, and you put a new one in. Twenty-five, thirty bucks at AutoZone or Riley's or wherever you go, you're back in business. Cheap. Easy. A person who's not mechanically inclined could make their car run again if it was misfiring. I, I even think that Hoovy could do it. Well, actually he's pretty good at mechanicing. I won't make fun of him too much. He's actually pretty good. So, your alternator goes out. It's not a huge take the wheel off and through the wheel well job. It's right here. Easy to get to. And as you can see, the serpentine belt is extremely easy to change. We just put a new one on. The old one just had age to it. And as you can see right there, there's the water pump. Again, plenty of room. The water pump's probably 40 or 50 bucks. You can put a new one on and be back in business. AC compressor down there. Look at it. There's miles of room around it. Easy to remove. This is a wonderful, wonderful engine. I love these engines. You can also see something else. You can see the ground. If you drop a bolt down there, you drop a tool, you can see where it went. If you need to reach something from the bottom, you can get from the bottom and get up there pretty easy too. Here's the EGR valve. Again, if that fails, two bolts. Unplug it. Put the new one on. You're back in business. Thermostat. This job pays a half an hour. I can change this thermostat in two minutes. Two bolts. This, this right here folds out of the way. Clean the area up. Put a new gasket and a thermostat on it. Zoop, zoop with the bolts. Torque them down. You're done two minutes. Some cars, I've done thermostats that can take, it truly takes the full half an hour, sometimes an hour. Ridiculous. Like a thermostat on a 4.2 inline 6 GM. Horrible. So let's go over some of the things that are actually bad about this motor. And that would be on these that have the plastic intakes. The intake gaskets can have issue and they can leak antifreeze externally or it can leak a little bit internally and as long as it's caught in time it's not a really big issue. 
if you start going through coolant or your coolant level is dropping, it's easy for a shop to say, oh, you got blown head gaskets. And I say to that malarkey, no, you don't. These things are so rare to blow head gaskets. It's usually the culprit is the in, there's a plenum gasket, it's what it's called. It goes, it's all around this plastic turtle looking thing. If you look down in here, this is just normal seepage from age. If you see antifreeze down in those areas, it's very likely coming from the intake gasket. Under, you can't really get this stuff out of the way to show you, but there's an EGR tube that comes right on the bottom below here in this plastic, and has been known to melt the plastic and blow a hole through it and create a huge vacuum leak. But that's not really that big of a deal. I mean, it is expensive to get an intake, but it's easy to change out. You take these bolts, you undo it, put the new one on, back in business. Now let's move over to here. There's a little metal coolant pipe, if you see the little elbow right there. I have replaced on this car, I've replaced these. These are plastic from the factory. They disintegrate, they cause a coolant leak, the O-rings fail. That's one of two. There's a second one that's back behind that you can't see. In order to replace these, the alternator has to come off. This bracket that holds the alternator has to come off. It's not a hard job, but that's a common failure point on the 3.8s as well as these coolant elbows. As you see, I've installed the upgraded metal ones, and this won't happen again. But the originals, like I said, are black, cheap plastic. As I said a minute ago, it's not the perfect engine. These occurrences I'm talking about are pretty rare. You just, I, mean, I see lots of these cars come and go, and maybe one a year might have one of these issues. So this video is not a real lengthy video. I just wanted to, to enlighten some of you guys that are in, in the market for a car. And you're thinking, well, what engine would be a good engine? These, these engines here, if you're looking for a cheap car or a college kid's car or a commuter, daily driver, just to get back and forth to work. Your mom's looking for a car. You have an elderly mother who needs a car who's just reliable and not ex too expensive. These Sabres and Park Avenues uh, Regals, things of that nature, with the 3.8 engine are just about the best motor. That's the best motor you can buy for the money. You won't be disappointed. I just see tons of these with high miles, very high miles on them. They just keep going and keep going and keep going. And like I showed you, they're fairly easy to repair. Sorry it's not such a long video today, but there's not a whole lot wrong with this engine. There's not a lot of failures, a lot of bad problems. Uh, it's just an excellent, excellent motor. We've actually, Mrs. Wizard and me, have been waiting for a while to do one of these videos. I don't get a whole lot of domestic cars in anymore. I mostly focus on European and exotics anymore. But in my beginning days of mechanicing, this is where I started and stuff like this. And I just frequently was amazed when the cars would come in the shop. It's just like, wow. I've seen this car in the shop ten times and it's always been brakes or, or suspension related or the radiator, but never the engine. The engine just keeps running great. So again, fuel economy, reliability, parts and repair, they're very cheap. This is the ticket right here, the GM 3800 series of V6s. I would really almost recommend these over a Honda or a Toyota. Now if you're getting to 2010 and newer cars, you can't get this anymore. So that's why I recommend Toyotas. As far as America getting close to Toyota and build quality and engineering and, and reliability, that was it right there. They really, really did good on that. They were actually sad when they had to stop making them because it was such a good engine. But in closing, if you guys see any tools or anything you're interested in that I use, they're on our, they're on our uh, Amazon affiliates page. We got hats and t-shirts and coffee mugs and things for sale and merchandise and stuff if you guys want one of those and we've got many more cool videos to come lots of wizard tips things that i've seen over the years that'll help you guys out making buying decisions or if your car is broken so again look forward to many more cool videos thanks for watching